Welcome to House Cleaning 500. In this video I'm going to show you how to do the shower after we just finished up with the bathroom sink. Uh, as you can tell this is a bathtub and a shower wall in one. Fiberglass. So for, with fiberglass and a shower I like to heat it with hot water first. I've told you I like hot water. Hot water loosens everything up. Most of the time I tell you to go with it dry but in this case we're going to heat it up because it will soften any soap or scum that you have in your shower. So we'll turn this on hot water. You might have a little trouble hearing me. I like a little, let me turn that off so I can talk to you. I like a sprayer, especially because this, you can't see everything in the shot, but it comes way up and around the back. You can spray things down. If you don't have a sprayer, you're going to have to just use a cup or a bowl, put it under your faucet and gently just pour water over the sides. Or you could turn on the hot water, turn the shower on, and let it spray without you in there on full hot for about 5-10 minutes. Let it steam up in here and then you can come in and scrub. It tends to make the bathroom a little hot so then when you're in here scrubbing you're kind of sweating. But it does loosen things up and makes it faster. So it's, it's kind of up to you. So I'm going to turn this on and get it hot so bear with me a second. It's going to be loud. Worked out it is already warm, so I'm going to turn this on. And you want to rinse everything down really well. Get it nice and wet. If you see there's a part with a lot of soap or something, let it soak on there. Spray it hot on there. I do have a dish here that I keep my soaps in. I'm going to let that soak down here on the bottom. Get your chrome. A lot of times you don't want to hit your chrome with too hot of water because Hot water will leave a burn mark on it if it's real hot. I, most people don't have their water too high for their own safety precautions. Because water can definitely burn you or scald your children. So I'm kind of out of the camera range there and all but I just want to make sure to get everything rinsed down. Get the hair out. Let me rinse this one more time, break it apart, break things apart if you can. That way you're cleaner and the water can get in there and get it all soft. Shut that down and I let the water drain a little bit and then I pull the plug because I don't want all my cleaner to go right down the drain. You pull your plug and it's going to let a little bit of water in here. I don't know if you can see it but there is a little bit of water down in there. I am going to try to spray. Uh, I usually don't recommend putting two cleaners together. But I am going to give just a little quick spray of this foam cleaner and see what happens. I, I assume it will clean. This shower is not that dirty. I mean, it's hard to prove something when you've already started with a fairly clean surface. I mean, people go, oh, look how wonderful this cleans. Well, it's already pretty clean, so it doesn't tell me much. But I already smell, because we've used the aerosol, I mean, it smells, but trying to tell if I'm getting it in my nose. It does seem like I'm getting it in my nose a little bit. It worked well, but as I said, it's not bad. So, I mean, if you're in this, I have seen on TV where they have the one that goes in the shower and sprays, but I don't know about that. I can't say I knock it. I haven't ever tried it, so I can't say. I'm going to drain that a little bit because I don't want to mix too many chemicals together. Me, mixing chemicals is a dangerous thing. So, pull that plug again. I'm going back to my porcelain cleaner. I will do some investigating to see if there's something in the grocery store or Walmart that I would recommend. At this point, not so much. You just give this kind of like we did the bathroom sink, just a spray. This runs down the sides and it starts working right away. Sometimes, if you have a fairly dirty shower, You'll start to see the line right in the dirt right away. Get your rag. Get it down here. The cleaner's already coming into the bottom here. Catch it in there. Start to get your chrome up here. Try to get out of camera view, sorry. Start here. A lot of times you want to start from top to bottom. I mean, that's the rule of cleaning. It's the first time in your life you'll ever start at the top is in cleaning. So top to bottom. That way it knocks all the dirt or grime down. You don't want to knock it back down on a clean surface. So that's why you start at the top. So we're going to come down. 
Well, I'm going to clean this tub, guys. I'm going to clean the whole thing, so I know I go out of camera view, but if you're going to do it, you might as well do it. Hit the chrome. The chrome is a little more damaged in here. I think it is from hot showers. This faucet has been changed here, just this part. The rest has it. This had a hole in it. It just was old. It takes a second. I am not scrubbing hard. I may be huffing, but I'm not scrubbing hard. Sorry, a little loud there. I'm going to run all over. Get up underneath the edges here. So I'm going to step up just a second here. I do seem to have a little bit of rust here in the corner, which unfortunately you can't see. But that porcelain cleaner is taking it right out. I will try to find some rust somewhere and show you how well porcelain cleaner will work on that. I have tried that, uh, what have I been mentioning, that CLR, it's to get rid of that calcium, lime, and rust, that's what CLR stands for. It works, just not as well as porcelain cleaner. I find it, it's, it's okay, if that's what you can get, okay, then by all means use it. I mean, I'm not knocking it, it's just, I like to use things that work faster. The rust is still there a little bit. If you're worried about it, you may need to put some full strength on there, just let it soak. It looks like that rust came from a razor. Razors and shaving cream bottles are just noted for rusting in the shower because the bottoms of them or the blades will rust. Hit your soap dish or whatever else you have. If your shampoo bottles have a lot of shampoo or conditioner down the sides from, you know, when I had little kids, whoo, you can have conditioner. Well, they would actually spray the shampoo out of the bathtub and slide around in here like little banshees. So I believe my sister's daughter wasted a whole brand new bottle of shampoo, expensive shampoo on sliding down in the bathtub. She wasn't impressed. So uh, we used the scrubbing bubbles and uh, they worked fine. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about them. They, they worked okay. For me personally, I just, I just don't like too many fumes anymore. You know, I used to like some of these smells and stuff, but anymore I go down the laundry soap aisle and those perfumes and chemicals just take my breath away anymore. So you can hit the front of your tub. Um, as I've said before, I wouldn't wear nice clothes to clean with. It's just given that you're going to get a bleached out spot. Or I mean, I haven't ever had porcelain cleaner change the coloring of my clothing, but you just never know. So I'm going to rinse it with hot water again. Already feeling kind of toasty in here. There it comes. So this just makes it a lot easier to have the sprayer. This was not a very expensive sprayer. I don't even know if it was $20. You put it in yourself. Uh, you can't really see it at the top, but you take the head of the shower off and you put this little adapter in there and then you can plug it in and take it off as you want. Because my husband absolutely hates these things. So he would rather just have a regular shower head, but for cleaning, it sure makes a difference for me because as you can see, boom, quickly we're already just rinsing it down. Grab this rag, any hair or anything, send it down, rinse off our soap dish, nice and clean. A little bit of soap there in the bottom, but it's a thick piece of soap, so I'm not going to worry about dissolving that. That is something I would probably, since it's kind of a big piece of soap, hang on, I'm going to grab, here's a little nifty trick, a piece of toilet paper. Anytime you have a lot of hair or maybe a piece of soap, just take this piece of toilet paper, collects it right away, and go in the trash so, so that you're not fighting with that piece of soap. So here I come with the squeegee. I'm going to start out of camera view here real quick, but I'll be in just a second, so hang on. I'll try to go fast. 
Like I said, the main thing to remember with a squeegee, which when I bring it around you'll see it in the view, is that you want to not pick it up. Many people pick the squeegee up. I don't know. I just Maybe it's just you think you're supposed to. I don't know. Actually, I probably learned that from a window washer, so I'm not giving myself a whole bunch of credit. I, wasn't, I would not say I'm always the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm not the dullest, but not the sharpest always. So hopefully we're in view. Yep, look back at the camera. So you lay it against the surface. You don't want it out at a 90 degree. You want to lay it almost, you know, kind of horizontal with it. Glide it along. And, and a lot of people would just do this. And you could, if you're not concerned about it, you're just wanting to get through fast, which I do. I just do this. But if you want it to be clean and you want to save on your rags, say you're cleaning somebody's house and you only have well, 10 rags, you got to be careful with them. You're going to want to take it, pivot it, bring it back. This is the same method you'd use on windows. Bring it back. Unfortunately with this, we are have a little bit of a curve here, so it's a little harder to get into it, but as I said in the bathtub, it may not be as critical, but you just you don't want to pick it up any more than you have to. Once you pick it up, that's when you get the streak mark left. So we're going to hit the back. If you want to, you could continue to dry down your bathtub. I don't dry it down. For some people, if you really, I mean, walk. I've seen some dedicated people, they will take this and take their squeegee and after every shower they will squeegee this down before they even get out of the shower to get dressed. They're stronger people than I am. I'm not going to squeegee down the shower after every shower. But especially with glass, it really does help a lot with glass, a glass shower. I'm going to take off this attachment here so you can see I just popped it right off. I blow it out. Get all the water out of it. Take it out of there. Shake it a little bit. You can put this away, or if you want to use it for children or washing pets, I use it sometimes to wash my dogs. It makes it a lot easier on the back. As I said, if you don't have a sprayer, it's going to take longer. But you can just take a bucket. This isn't, you can have a bigger bucket than this, or a glass. Not a glass glass, but a plastic glass. Put it under here and just kind of throw it onto your wall to rinse it down. Okay. Sometimes you just, a lot of times I just jump into the tub. Okay, get a little wet, but it moves faster and you can get it done quicker. I do dry down the chrome just because I don't want it to leave that spot. Once you leave these hard water spots on here, they begin to etch into things. And once it gets etched, you can't fix that. Etched is damaged. It's not just a hard water buildup. Hard water buildup is going to be out. You're going to feel it coming away from the surface. If it's etched, it's going to be like an indentation. It's going to go in. It's like a little pit out of glass or out of your chrome. And you can't fix that. It's just damaged over time and years and abuse. So, I think we're pretty much done in here. You can see this looks fairly well. I am going to contact Hopefully somebody that has a rental unit or something to show, say you buy a new home or say you have a rental unit, um, to show something that's worse than this. It's hard for, well I don't know about for you, but for me to judge if something's really working when you're starting with a clean surface. Some of the videos I've been noticing on YouTube, and I'm not saying anything bad about them, but they're starting with a clean surface and you're like, well yeah, it took you a minute and a half to clean that, but it was already clean. So, you're not, I mean, cleaning takes time, and I know my motto is to save time and dime, but it, it just takes some time. But this didn't take long at all. Look, we got it in one video. So, I think we did pretty well.